Hello and welcome to episode two of the Before MX Champion Chat series for a real catch up with our 2019 champions from all the grades from A all the way back to VEX. This evening I'm going to talk to our grade A MX2 National Irish Champion and that's of course Jake Sheridan. He's a man that was maybe a little bit harder to get in the paddock so I'm delighted he's going to join me here this evening and get to talk to everyone here this evening. So without further ado, it's your 2019 MX2 National Irish Champion, Jake Sheridan. Jake, thanks very much for coming on. I believe no, this was your first ever National Irish title. So how does it feel to be the reigning MX2 champion? Yeah, definitely. It feels great. Um, you know, it's, uh, it was a massive learning curve for me. Um, I've had great battles for championships in the past uh, in the MX Nationals with Glenn McCormick. And um, this one was nice to be able to kind of like clinch it and have that feeling of winning uh, a championship, you know, and especially uh, just being out there trying to learn how to deal with the pressure and lead races where I was never really, uh, say, a top top rider in the in the youths on 85s and stuff like that. I was kind of like maybe fifths and thirds maybe. But, uh, yeah, no, it was definitely, it was nice to, nice to win one of them now. So. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. And just to mention to everyone as well, if you have a question for Jake throughout the broadcast, I can bring it up here if you comment down below. So as you see, I wrote welcome earlier on. So if there's anything you'd like Jake and I to speak about, be sure and write it in there. So, uh, Jake, just going back to the championship itself then, um, you know, what do you think it was that helped you to win the championship this year? Was it consistency in riding, starts, outright speed, qualifying, pre-race preparation? What, uh, what do you think meant that you could uh, be the 2019 champion for MX2? Um, I think it was, um, you know, consistency, well, is key for any championship. Um, and just being getting good starts and um yeah just just uh, trying to keep your own and, and finish the races um I, I thought maybe there was only going to be five guys that could win the Irish championship this year you know uh, where in england it's like the gates are stacked so but um yeah for definitely to win the championship i had to be consistent and i think i finished i was on the podium for every round uh and i missed i think i was i missed first i think i i missed the uh, one overall or something like that, I think, and I think that was in Tanjagi, so I was pretty consistent uh, throughout the whole year, in fairness, so. Yeah, and I remember doing the commentary and making the videos throughout the season last year, and uh, I think it was like a, a combination of an absolute rocket ship off the starts, uh, and then really consistent round after round, you know, maybe maybe not the fastest outright speed person on the track, but definitely the, the consistency to deliver something like a, a Ryan Dungey type ride, would you agree? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I, I might have been the, the, the quickest maybe on certain days, but um, I, I definitely felt I was maybe the most consistent. And maybe you could probably say the smarter rider, you know, take as, as many chances uh, as maybe the other guy. But I was still, uh, yeah, I still have to bring the, bring the, a good few wins home and, and, and take the other ride. Yeah, you know, it was nice. Yeah. Brilliant. And uh, we have a question in here from Gerald Callahan. So obviously there's a difference maybe in how the sport is supported between the North and the South. Um, there's obviously a lot more practice available to riders in the North compared to what we have in the South. And Gerald has a, a comment, maybe just, or a question to, to kind of support that argument. And he wants to know, Jake, what do you think needs to change to improve motocross in Ireland? Um, my opinion, to be honest, is just that, you know, there needs to be um, a lot more tracks that we can go to. Um, you know, I there's they're, they're never really opened, to be honest with you. And it's um, I suppose it's hard for the for, for the clubs to open as well. But I think from just being able to, to, to watch the way the North uh, support their riders and stuff like that, like, you know, they, they all have a way a lot more tracks than we do down the south and they have them open all the time. Well, at least once or twice a week, every week. And, you know, it's, it's just to get out on the bike and for like the, to build your confidence. And, and, you know, like a lot of people from the South haven't got the opportunity to go up the North during the week and, and maybe even on the weekends to go practicing because like, you know, you, you need, it costs money to go up and down every time, you know. But um, yeah, I think definitely that would improve like the rider uh, ability in Ireland anyway and to bring the riders on. It's definitely to open up tracks and, and keep them kind of prepped as much as they could and you know just even get you know just the, the community even better as the motocross community better in, in in the south to even like you know invest in the clubs and help help pay for the track uh, maintenance and water or whatever like that you know it's it's uh we all just have to help each other to get these tracks open and and to keep keep them on track and keep us riding the bike so 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I suppose I, I'm down the south as well, and there's a, the lack of practice tracks definitely is a big issue. Uh, but we're going to move on to something a little bit different now and take a look back, uh, look back at a, a real big highlight in your career, I feel, and that was the Coupe de Leven year, the Cup of the Future that took place. And this is for youth riders from all around Europe. And uh, Team Ireland, in the year that you did it, did an amazing achievement to win it outright in that year. Can you tell us a little bit about the Coupe and what was it like to be a part of that? Yeah, no, that was uh, definitely a big, uh, it, it was actually like a, a dream of mine, really. Uh, and it was definitely a big a big achievement for, for me and my teammates. Um, I was there the year before, and I, I uh, was the first time there the year before. And um, yeah, it was like a big eye-opener and stuff. So uh, to go back there that year and win it, it was uh, definitely something special to me anyway. And um, yeah, it was it was... It was a tough weekend. Uh, we had to work hard. It's MX, it's MX two and MX one together combined. So, um, and it's an uphill start. So you needed a good start, and the track is quite hard to pass, and it's pokey and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, no, we, we managed to, to pull it off in the end. Like we uh, we go we but we all got good strong rides. So and uh, yeah, that that's that's how we. That's how so we what's it. what's the structure of that event then? Does it take place over two or three days, or how how exactly does it work? Is it just under one day? It's a it's a two day event. So uh, on the Saturday you get qualifying. So it's it's something nearly like a GP, uh, and you get your your qualifying and you have your. You, I think it's two qualifying sessions on the Saturday, and then uh, sorry, it's a warm up on the on the Saturday. It's a warm up, and then you have time practice, and then you go into a qualifying race that that uh, Saturday evening, and then you have your two. You get a warm up on Sunday. I think it's a twenty minute warm up on Sunday, and then you go straight into your two. I think it's twenty five plus two minimal yeah. then after that so. yeah so something very similar to a, a motocross of nations layout um you're a rider then that focuses a lot on the british championship um and i think that's that's kind of where you want to see yourself in the future as being a, a more involved with the british championship at a very high level do you want to take us back to how your championship has been last year we have a picture here from desert martin and how how that championship has been for you in the past yeah, uh, last year um, I didn't I didn't really get to finish all the rounds because uh, they kind of combined with the Irish Championship, and it was for just well, I suppose just for me, my mom and dad, it was kind of quite hard to do do them all. You see, so I done the ones that I could get to, um, and yeah, the it was one of my best uh, races was in a uh, Desert Martin. Um, I was I think I was ninth overall on the day. But uh, yeah, it was lovely. I got real good starts and uh, in front of the home crowd again. You know, it's nice to get cheers on the on the other side of the fence. And especially Des Martin is one of like the best tracks. Uh, in, well, it is the best track in Ireland anyway. And then it's one of the best ranked in uh, in the UK as well. So, you know, with that, that there was a good weekend for me as well. So, yeah. And what's the difference like in the level of competition between the National Irish and the British Championships? So how much of a gap is there between, between the top runners in the British and the, the top runners in the Irish? Um, well, I for the for the public's view from back home, I would say you'd I'd run up the front in the in the Irish Championship, and then I'm I, last year I was probably I was like a top ten rider, so um that's that's kind of like the level I think. Okay. Um, but um, there's other there's other ways of of uh, you know I suppose coming on the tail, um they might have a bit more track familiarization. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they, they might have uh, some more track familiarization with the tracks out there and the same with us back home here you know we we might be able to you know put it to them when they come over here i think um i think that's what maybe was was happening in desert Martin that time you know we kept a lot of well i kept a lot of good kind of like ranked english riders behind me for a certain amount of time for the race um and stuff like that so yeah i think uh that's it really yeah yeah, so you are backing yourself heavily this year um, to do very well uh, at a British level to try and uh, elevate your speed again even further. And a part of that preparation was the same as John Mira to head down to the Red Sand MX Park uh, in Spain. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your time down there? How long did you spend down there? What's that facility like to train at? What kind of other riders were you around? Yeah, I spent uh, this year, definitely, I spent a lot of time in, uh, in Red Sands. Um, and I just wanted to... I kind of knew that it was the place to kind of go to. A lot of GP riders go there, and, and the track is difficult to go around. It is monotonous at times when you're there all the time, but um, I kind of knew I was in the best place to, to get ready because the track's rough, and it's it's it definitely simulates to 
to what a race would be like on a race weekend. It's rough, it's gnarly, it's uh, uh, plenty of ruts and big jumps and stuff like that. And then um, I was kind of like gearing myself up as well to with the big jumps over there in Red Sands to kind of, you know, get used to them and bits and pieces like that and how big the track is and uh, and as well to go out with the, the fast riders too, of uh, like fast DMX riders, MX2 riders, trying to judge myself against them and just to try to watch them and learn as much as I could off them because... You know, I did my first DMX uh, last year and it was a massive eye opener, you know, and, and, and a lot of them are, are really, really fast. So um, it was just to, to get out there and get stuck in with them and try to, you know, learn as much as I possibly could off them. So. Can, can you recall any of the names of the riders who you would have been out on track with in, in Red Sands? Was there anybody who's kind of a common household name? Yeah, I seen uh, well Hurlands was out there. Um, I, I was able to watch him for a couple of days. Um, Dahid Hatchie. Guys are out there too. Um, the Ice One Husqvarna guys are out there too. Jed Beaton and uh, Thomas Kira Olsen as well. So um, it was nice to, to even just stand on the other side of the fence and watch them and watch their technique and, and, and uh, try and trust as lane as much as possible and what they do to make it easier for them to, to go as fast as they can around the track. So. Yeah, and, it, and you're out there at a great time of year as well because back home here in Ireland, I think it, it's, it's, it's a terrible shame that we have coronavirus now because for the first couple of months it rained so much, all of the tracks were closed, you couldn't go anywhere. Um, so you're definitely based out in the right place. But you tried to continue that on then uh, afterwards by getting yourself set up in the uh, Cairoli compound in the MX Center Lommel, uh, which is based in Belgium. So do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, that facility and what your plan was to be based there? Yeah, um, we literally just, uh, you know, my mum and dad uh, and myself, we kind of just, we kind of bit the bullet and we said, look, we're going to go at this, you know, I'm healthy and, 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 and I'm like, I'm strong and I'm, I'm coming back off like a, you know, a, a good 2019 season. So we, we said we'll go and, uh, you know, we'll just rent it out for the year and see how we get on. And uh, yeah, for definitely, it's it, it was definitely the place to, to be this year anyway. Um, we literally just came back from Spain. We drove back uh, from Spain and drove straight to Belgium uh, just to, to get into the garage and see what it was like and, and, and kind of start getting set up in it. Um, and, yeah, literally, we were only there for a week. And, uh, yeah, we had to come home. But, um, no, the, the garage is perfect for, like, for training. Uh, you're literally just there. If you if you look at it as just as a job, you're literally just there to train, eat and sleep. Like, and uh, it, it, it's pretty much perfect for that. Like, so. Yeah, so we have a picture on screen of the, the garage that you're based in in the MX Centre Lommel. So do you want to tell us a little bit about what facilities are available there at the at the unit itself and, and how many people you're around? Yeah, there's uh, the garage, as you see, just there now. It, um, there's six of them in a row. And then you have where the lights are shining, you have like a little loft uh, up over your head. So it's like a, it's it's two bunk beds um, and then it's like a, it's like a couch bed as well. And you have a TV and you have your shower and you have like a little cooker and stuff. And um, you have like your bench there and the picture and stuff. Um, you, you have plenty of room for working the bikes. Uh, and then at the back of, uh, just down beside the the last unit, there's like a wash bay and, and, and uh, bits and pieces like that. So, you yeah, know, it's, it's it, it, to be honest, it's it's well set up. So it is for, for, for a motocross rider um, and stuff like that. But, you yeah, know, it's, it is, it's the top job. Like, yeah, now I, I was lucky enough to be based out there with you for that week in the Netherlands and, and thank you very much for uh, working with me over there. Uh, and we went to practice one day at a track called Noon Speed, which was a, a very deep sand track uh, in the Netherlands, which was about a two hour drive north of, of Lommel where we were at. Uh, do you want to tell us about your first experience getting out on a, a midweek practice in the Netherlands in the heart of world motocross and what it was like there? Yeah, uh, that one was a tough one now. Uh, because literally I came back from uh, from Spain and I didn't really get so much riding time in coming back from Spain because we were just trying to get organised and get set up in the uh, in the garage there in Belgium. So um, and then with the weather being so bad there before the first round of the British as well, it was it was it was uh, it was quite hard just to even get out anywhere on the bike just to to loosen up and uh, to just put a bit of sea time in. And uh, but we got actually we we both got out up there and uh, yeah it was it was. It's nice being around, you know, the fast riders out there. You, because there's that many tracks and there's that many good riders there. You know, you could see five GP riders, you could see one, you could see ten. Um, but it's all it's just a great opportunity to to watch what they do and try, you know, just learn off them their lines, their lap times, chase them, 
um, you know, it's just it's it's just a perfect recipe to like you know to get to have that opportunity if you are willing to put in the work to get fast and, and to learn as much as possible. So, yeah, it's definitely the place to be if you're an up and coming rider uh, and want to get on to a high level in the British or or a championship of that type or or try to get into the European Championship. Now, the reason uh, that I travel out there with you as well was to test this uh, this motorclick device uh, and to put it onto the bike and get information on the suspension sped up uh, and things that way. So we put the unit onto your bike that day in Nun Speed. Um, how did you find using the product itself or did you think it helped you with um, your riding on the day or decision making? Yeah, it was, oh, it was actually very interesting in that um, just to see what it was all about really because, um, you know, you do certain riders and, and as well as myself you know we we, we kind of like we don't maybe know enough about our suspension uh because we're just kind of like going from you know from race to race and from practice track to practice track and you know it's very important to know exactly what your suspension's doing and, and what way to adjust it to the track and where you're gonna go harder or soft or you know it, it, it was one of them but um yeah we tested it and you know got got some good feedback and it's it's pretty much like another third eye on the bike it's like someone watching you on the bike and i even found where i was kind of like struggling with a little bit and i didn't know whether to you know either go softer or harder and stuff like that and uh, the, the the data on the on the phone was able to see you know you need to either adjust the harder or softer so um and yeah so it was definitely i, I it was definitely you know very good and um, I would have yeah, liked so, yeah, so we, we, we had um, five features within the app now that I spoke about in some of the other videos. So there's a, a lap timing, section timing. You can see all of your suspension movement. Um, you can see where you've bottomed out on the track, and then you can select uh, a part of the track to look at the suspension behavior for that part. So was there any particular feature within the product itself that you liked using the most or stood out the most? I thought... Um... I pretty much thought all of it was good. I thought the lap times was, was quite good, you know. Um, I liked the way it was like a, it was like a GPS kind of uh, setup thing on the phone where you could see whether you went outside or inside and it could show you whether you're faster or slower, you know. Um, and, yeah, it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be really good on race day, you know. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be like another advantage on a race day, you know. That's, uh, that's what I was hoping we could have got the full week there if the weather was good to get out and do a lot of testing with it. But... The time was kind of cut short um but yeah no it was it was you know it was it is definitely something that i'd love to use on race day for sure okay. brilliant thanks very much Jake. right so we're going to move into the last bit of the interview here now but um just to wrap up that bit uh, if you're interested in working with the motor click device as well the best way to let me know is to sign up to our email so if you go on to the website www.motorclick.com there'll be a little pop-up there that comes up and you can fill in your email address on that but uh, Jake, we're going to talk about you now again here. And, you know, racing in Ireland, it's not a professional sport. It is an amateur sport. And this picture, I think, is from your Instagram during the week from the work that you do. Uh, so do you want to tell us a little bit about what ordinary life looks like for Jake Sheridan outside of racing? Yeah, uh, definitely. It's uh, I, I work hard, you know, I work hard with my dad. Um, and, um, you know, we if we're not racing, we're working, so. Um, it was it, it's it's uh, yeah we, we we put the long hours in you know just to keep keep going you know uh, I have I have one or two small sponsors and stuff like that but uh, it's it's pretty much just through my dad's hard work and so he funds everything for me so um, I we, we go to work with for not racing so even at this particular moment now with with the the COVID nineteen we're we're flat out working just to you know just to keep going and and to, if we do get the opportunity to to go back to Belgium for next year you know at least we'll have you know maybe a bit of a head start on on, on our race season or whatever but at the moment there's like very little riding uh, only maybe a little bit of physical training but other than that I'm I'm literally just flat out working in the van with them so yeah so. Yeah, that's, so, so your team is called RSR Plant Services KTM, and uh, this this is RSR Plant Services, the the repair and maintenance of these kind of big grabs and stuff that way. So that's that's what you work at normally. And you mentioned there, you have a couple of smaller sponsors on board as well, uh, FXR for the gear. Uh, but is is sponsorship something you're open to if people wanted to support your racing? Yeah, for sure. You know, um, definitely. Um, you know, I'm, we I might be the the uh, the nicest approachable guy in the paddock you know but i'm kind of like i've kind of like you know just put myself that i'm there to, to get a result and, and to win 
Uh, and yeah, you know, for sure, like if, if anyone was willing to help me out, yeah, it's much appreciated. You know, uh, I'm the kind of guy that does. You know, I I want to I want to win. I want to put the work in. And if there's a better way of, of making me get there quicker, I'm gonna do it. Like no, whatever yeah, it is, you know, absolutely, yeah. And I mean, like you're just someone who takes the racing seriously. And I'm really glad we got to chat in this informal way on Facebook Live this evening because I feel. Uh, that people can kind of get to see the real Jake Sheridan a little bit more, uh, the same as what I got to see when I was over in the Netherlands, and that uh, you are really very approachable and a very nice man to work with. So, uh, you know, if people are interested in sponsoring Jake, you know, sets of tires, a tank of diesel, all that kind of stuff goes a long way, um, you know, goggles or, or parts or whatever. Uh, if people want to help Jake along with that, I'm sure you, you'd be very happy to have that support, Jake, you would? Yeah, no, without a doubt, you know, definitely, like, yeah. Uh... Especially in a, in in in, uh, in motocross, you know, every little bit helps, and uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's just the it's the it's the you know it's the people that you know help and and want to see you win, uh, and, and will help you get there. Are the people you know, it's the keep your circle kind of like you know with good people and stuff. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's uh, without a doubt, I'd be much appreciated. So brilliant. Well, hopefully somebody might might reach out. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But anyway. We're kind of going to wrap it up here now and bring things to an end. So, Jake, thank you very much for uh, coming to join me on this call this evening. It's been great to have you on. And uh, hopefully we'll have you on again many, many times in the future to talk about future successes. Yeah, hopefully. Please, God. And uh, I hope everyone stay safe. And, uh, you know, we'll uh, hopefully soon enough we'll be able to get back to normal and, uh, you know, get back out riding and, and doing what we love. So absolutely yeah okay that's brilliant jake well i'd just like to mention uh this of course is brought to you by beforemx.com the classified ads website for everything off-road it's also brought to you by factory fins so these are just some example of helmet fins that we have for uh 100 mountain bike helmets uh, and i've got a tricolor i think jake you have something similar like that for your array as well and uh, yeah we can do this in all different colors so we have pink purple blue red everything there like that and also then, of course, by Moto Click, which is the suspension setup product that we work with Jake uh, over in the Netherlands. And if we're actually looking for investors at the moment, uh, so if you'd like to support the growth of this company, I'd be absolutely delighted to hear from you. Um, again, you can find out more at www.motoclick.com. Jake, thank you very much for joining us here this evening. Um, it's been really yep. great to talk to you. And no doubt we'll see you again on track real soon. Perfect. See you later, guys. Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Bye-bye.